estimate sums and differences. Before we can talk about how to estimate sums and differences, we have to make sure we know what each of those words mean. An estimate is a number close to an exact solution. It tells about how much or how many. Another way to say that is your, a, a good guess about to an answer to a problem. The uh, sum is an answer to an addition problem. And the way that I remember that is to think about the word sum and the word add. Both of them have three letters, so that might be a reminder to you when you see the word sum. And then finally, the difference is an answer to a subtraction problem. When we talk about subtraction, we usually think about taking away something, but there's another model of subtraction that we can think of uh, using a picture. If you have these two um, strips, the one is seven inches and one is five inches, the difference between these two strips would be this piece right here, how five inches is different than seven inches. Well, five inches is two inches shorter than the seven inches, and we got that difference of two by doing a subtraction problem, seven minus five. So picturing this model might help you think why the word difference means subtraction. We're going to talk about three different ways that you can estimate sums and differences, and we will um, go through, we'll have one board from each of those. So the first one is compatible numbers. Compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to work with mentally or in your mind without having to write something down every time. When you are estimating, replace the actual numbers with compatible numbers. So let's look at two examples. I have these two numbers, and I can quickly add them by thinking about other numbers that are easy to do, mental, um, to do using mental math. So I can change 52 to 50 and 74 to 75. These are good picks because I can think about quarters and money, like 75 cents and 50 cents. So if I think about 50 cents and 75 cents, in my mind I'm going to send one quarter over here to make a dollar and then have that 25 cents left, which was 125 cents. Um, for 83 minus 38, I can change them to uh, compatible numbers. 83 could go to 80, and 38 could go to 40, and I would get an estimated difference of 40. 80 minus 40 is 40. So when you're doing compatible numbers, you might want to think always of ways to make 10 or ways to make 100. And then another strategy is to think money, like we did with this problem. A second way to estimate sums and differences is using front-end estimation. In my mind, this is kind of like easy rounding. It's, it's similar. Um, you, when you're doing front-end estimation, you're com computing with the front digits. So let's look at an example. We have 590 plus 417. In front-end estimation, you just keep the first digits and turn everything else into zeros. You don't have to worry about looking at this and seeing if it bumps it up or not. It's just a very quick way to add the numbers or subtract the numbers. So this just changes straight to 500, and this one goes to 400. You add them up and you get 900. One thing to keep in mind, if you have a set of pair or a set of numbers where you don't have the same amount of digits in each one, see how this number has four digits, three digits, four digits? Here's the rule we're going to use to determine which um, place value to use um, when we are using front-end estimation. We're going to use the greatest place value of the smallest number. So let's see what that means in this example. 243 is my smallest number. So I'm going to keep all the way up to the hundreds place value in each of them because this number falls in the hundreds place. So this number in front-end estimation is going to be 2,300. This one's going to change to 200. This one's going to change to 1,100. So I kept all of my numbers all the way to the hundreds place, and I get a sum of 3,600. An interesting thing about front-end estimation is that it always gives a sum less than the actual sum when, you're, when you get your estimate. So let's see what that means. I have these two numbers here that I want to add together and they change to 3,000 and 4,000 for an answer of s an estimation of 7,000. Now, when I go back and look and I refine my estimate, which means change it to be a little bit closer, a little more exact, I notice that this, when I went um, from this 3,287 to 3,000, I went down about 300. So this number is about 300 less than what I started with. 
here, I went down about 500 from 4,501. It's down five less, about um, 500. So all together, I went down about 800. So if I want to make this a more exact estimate, I would need to add 800 back. So if I went down 800, I'm going to go back up 800 to get a more exact estimate of 7,800. That's called refining your estimation. And the third way, and probably the way that you're going to use most often, and the way that you're going to find most helpful and accurate is rounding estimation. Unless you're otherwise told, when you're doing rounding estimation, round to the greatest place value of the smallest number, then add or subtract. Sort of the same rule as you saw on the front end estimation. Sometimes it's going to tell you, round to the thousands place and then add or subtract. But in, if you're not told, then look at your um, smallest number and round all of them to the place value that that number fell in. So in this case, 2,960 is my smallest number. It falls in the thousands place, so I'm going to round both numbers to the thousands place. So this one rounded to 60,000, this one rounded to 3,000, and I added them together to get an estimation of 63,000. Here, this one is my smallest number. It falls in the hundred thousands place, so I round both of those numbers to the hundred thousands place. 1,100,000, and this one turned into 800,000. When I subtract, when I subtract it, I get an estimation, an estimated difference of 300,000. Now, I hope you're thinking, when will I use this? Well, of course you're going to use this when you're asked to round on a problem. But more importantly than that is that you will use estimation to check the reasonableness of an answer. We're going to be doing, in uh, probably our next video, the exact problems of addition and subtraction of large numbers. And it's really easy to get your borrowing incorrect or your um, carrying incorrect or line up your numbers incorrectly. And you can get a very strange answer. Like you could, turn, you could accidentally get something around 80,000 here. And if you estimate, whether on paper or just in your head, and compare your exact answer to your estimate, it'll help you know if you've made a careless mistake. So I hope that you will use estimation, any of these three methods, um, to check your answers and not just when you're told to round for the purpose of a specific question. And to end, this is a problem that you're going to see a lot. It's a common question format that I want us to start to get um, very comfortable with. You're given here a chart where it's listed um, a a, on a trip and the days that people traveled and how many um, they traveled, uh, how many miles that they traveled each day. So here's the question: Which is closest? Now that word tells me we're going to estimate. We don't need an exact answer to the difference. That word tells me we're going to do some subtracting between, now let's find out the two things, the total number of miles this family traveled on day one and day two combined. That word combined tells me I'm going to put together the amount of day one and day two. I'm going to have to combine those by adding them together. And so I'm going to find the difference between all that in red and this in green. The number of miles traveled on day three. So it's asking me to put together these two and find the combined total here and subtract that amount. And because I'm using asked for an estimate, let's do that down here. So here's the two days that I'm combining and I'm going to, going to subtract day two. I'm going to use rounding because that if it doesn't ask me to use a certain method, rounding is the most accurate. 287 rounds to 300. 316 rounds to 300, and 295 rounds to 300. Interesting, they all round were about 300. Combined day one and day two is 600 miles. So 600 miles minus the amount f estim of estimated for day three gives us a difference of 300 miles.